Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. And hello again, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. The Arkansas General Assembly is on track to complete its agenda and action on the governor's next week. Then a recess and a return eventually to consider legislative redistricting and perhaps some other matters. We'll get an assessment from both sides of the aisle in a moment. First, the view from the executive branch. Governor Hutchinson this week pronounced himself satisfied with the legislature's work but somewhat less so on two other fronts, the COVID immunization rate and the direction of his own Republican Party. We spoke with the governor on Thursday. Governor, thanks very much for making this time for us. Thank you for making yourself available. Session, uh, is, session is very uh, near an end. You have got essentially what you wanted in terms of, it appears anyway at this point, uh, in terms of fiscal uh, matter, budgetary matters and also appropriations. Uh, are you satisfied with it? You know, I am satisfied in terms of the success of the session. I'm very pleased with uh, what we've done in the area of education, particularly with a very innovative way of raising teacher salaries in Arkansas and helping the uh, rural and, and lower income school districts to up their teacher pay. Uh, you know, we continued down the computer science initiative and uh, elevated that once again through uh, legislation and support. And then you look at our public safety issues, you look at our tax cuts, you look at the, uh, the budget that will be uh, voted on uh, hopefully early next week. These are huge success stories that we have in the session coming out of a pandemic. We're in a very strong position. Obviously, there's been controversial bills that have come out that have uh, overshadowed some of the successes, but it is really important to focus on uh, uh, the agenda that we set, that we've accomplished, and even hate crimes, which people said we uh, have a very hard time getting passed. Uh, there was a compromise worked out. It's a very uh, unique approach that's been taken, and uh, that was a success story. And then uh, there was a lot of pundits that said we were not going to be able to get uh, the votes necessary for the reauthorization of our Medicaid expansion program, uh, which was Arkansas Works, and now it's our home. Uh, we have to go and get that reauthorized, and we got that authorized through the legislation, uh, as well as the appropriation bill passed, which takes a three-fourths vote. So enormous success stories coming out of this session. I cannot recall, sir, a session in which the legislative branch asserted itself uh, more than it has in this past session, both in terms of its, uh, its questioning of executive authority, its uh, hesitation on some executive appointments, and also the proposed amendment that would uh, permit the General Assembly to call itself into session. I'd like to ask you, sir, to reflect on this this sudden shift in, in legislative attitudes. Uh, and it's and it's almost entirely comprised of your party. That's right. I think there's a couple ingredients there. I mean, one, conservatives and Republicans are very passionate about their ideas. And so whenever they are in the legislature, uh, whenever they have a responsibility of handling the budget, they take it seriously. Whenever they have the responsibility of oversight, they take it very seriously. And so you've got uh, two strong branches of government that is naturally going to have some friction. And that's exactly the way our founding fathers designed it, uh, that there uh, will be some tension between the branches. So that's healthy. Uh, but in Arkansas, as you know, you know, structurally, uh, the legislative branch is very powerful uh, in and of itself. But I think what you've seen this session is coming out of the pandemic. Uh, they believed that they were on the sidelines, which they were not. Uh, they uh, had the opportunity to gather together. Uh, you know, we talked about having a special session, uh, but we reached an agreement that it was not necessary because I could do it by an executive order, and that was providing liability immunity. And so, uh, but they're still uh, coming out of the pandemic. I think they wanted to assert themselves. They've done that. And uh, we've worked through it, uh, the Emergency Powers uh, Act revisions. Uh, we came to an agreement on that. I'm satisfied with it. That'll protect the prerogatives of future governors uh, to lead uh, during an emergency. And that's the critical thing 
that the executive, the governor, has flexibility to lead during an emergency, and that prerogative is still in place. You, in an interview earlier this week, and credit where it's due with, with our friend Roby Brock, you emphasized some, dis, some dismay, anyway, minor dismay, well, dismay, put it that way, at, uh, at some of the legislation which you termed unnecessary. My question, sir, in its emphasis on social issues, transgender, gay rights, that sort, uh, and also firearms, uh, have we overemphasized these social issues at the at the expense of smooth and efficient governance and the state's image for that matter? Well, I mean, I'm a uh, social conservative, but I'm also a uh, conservative that believes in a restrained role of government. And we've lost the debate. We've lost the analysis of is this the proper role of government? Uh, should we address uh, this social issue through uh, our community, through our uh, church, uh, through our family, where we instill the values that we hold dear and want to cling to, rather than uh, utilize the power of government to enforce that value? And, uh, you know, I look at some of the things that we're mandating, whether it's in the schools or, or whether it's uh, micromanaging health care. Uh, these are things that we have to look at other means to accomplish versus simply legislative or governmental mandates that come through. And so I just want that to be a part of the conversation. As you know, I've signed the Girls in Sports Bill that protects uh, women in sports uh, so that they're not competing against biological males. I've signed pro-life legislation, but I did veto one bill that interfered with the health care provided toward uh, those that uh, are minors that have the consent of their parents that are under the counseling of physicians. And I don't think uh, the legislature needs to jump right in the middle of that decision. Uh, I got overruled on that, uh, and uh, that's created uh, a, a debate that I think is a good debate, uh, that we want to show ourselves both as conservative but also as uh, tolerant uh, of the diversity of our state and nation and, and also that we understand and live by that principle of, of a restrained government. And, uh, and so that's the message I've tried to communicate. Well, let, me, let me go to, back to, sir, uh, uh, to uh, hate crimes, if I could. The, the version which you accepted, you described as unique and a success story. You're aware, sir, that it's been uh, dismissed by some interest groups, some individuals, organizations, as a sham. Your response? Well, I, I disagree with that. Uh, I think the uh, authors of it were very genuine trying to protect uh, groups uh, that are identifiable from being attacked because of who they are. And that's the fundamental principle of it. Uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, whatever category you're in, whether it's a racial minority or whether you're because of your gender or other issue that you're being uh, viciously attacked and targeted for violence, that's who we wanted to protect. This bill does that. And uh, I think it's all going to depend upon its application, how prosecutors use it. I want them to use it when the circumstances call for it. And that will be the proof of what we've done, that it is a meaningful exercise. I did want a different version of it. I don't get everything that I want. I wanted to have specific categories identified because they're the ones that have been harmed in 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 the past uh, in our nation. Uh, but this bill accomplishes that same purpose, and I applaud uh, Speaker Shepard and Senator Pro Tem uh, Hickey that worked hard uh, to get this through, and had we not worked hard on it in that fashion, we wouldn't have anything through, so this is a very significant step forward. Uh, if I could move on to health care, sir, uh, you are soon to observe the one millionth immunization, I believe, in Arkansas for COVID-19, and yet the state still we're nowhere near where you and health experts want the state to be. Uh, what is the problem here, sir? Is there is there a surge in resistance here or what in your estimation? Well, there is a, a surge in resistance and uh, I don't know that it's unique to Arkansas. Uh, I talked to my fellow governors across the country and they're running into the same problem. And part of it is, uh, I think, the resistance that is, is enhanced in a rural state. Uh, we have to do an incredible amount of education. And then, you know, the J&J &J, uh, pause has caused uh, some increased hesitancy that we've seen. 
And so we've done uh, the easy work, probably the first one million Arkansans. Uh, not easy, it's been very hard, but it's going to be a lot easier to get there than it will be to get to the second million uh, that we need. And so we have a lot of work ahead of us. We're scratching our heads as to how can we incentivize, uh, how can we encourage, how can we educate, because uh, as yesterday we saw our cases go up, I hope we don't see them go up again. Uh, but that's the warning sign to us that the vaccination is the way out of this. We need everybody to get it. And quite frankly, it doesn't help whenever we have uh, laws being passed that prohibits uh, people from requiring vaccinations. Uh, I don't support a vaccination passport for travel purposes. I'm not going to mandate it from government. But at the same time, uh, let's make sure that our private sector you know, has the ability to protect their workplace. And so signals that we send are very important. We need to do everything we can to encourage our Kansans to get vaccinated. Well, uh, that takes me back, sir, to the General Assembly and the legislative executive tension there. Have you had the partner that you really needed in the in the legislative branch in tackling the pandemic? Well, let me emphasize that this has really been a good session in terms of our working, my working relationship with uh, the leadership of the House and Senate. We've communicated well. We've worked together. We've resolved the issue. So I'm very pleased with that, uh, the success of that. Uh, in terms of some of the bills that came out, I've got a lot on my desk that I'm wrestling with as to whether they're constitutional, whether they're taking our state in the right direction. Those are decisions uh, yet to be made. But let me talk about one specific thing here, and that is uh, the debate on a constitutional amendment uh, that would allow the legislature to call themselves into session. And it was pointed out in that debate that I think it's, you know, uh, more than half of the states across the country do have the ability of the legislature to call themselves into session, so it's not that unusual. I would point out that in every one of those states, uh, they also have a meaningful veto of the governor. And that's the balance that's needed. If we're going to give more power to the legislature, uh, in different areas, then you've got to give the governor of this state a meaningful veto, which should be two-thirds veto, rather than simply a, a majority override. And uh, the people of Arkansas, I don't believe, uh, really understand how easy it is to override the veto with a simple majority. Uh, I don't plan on fighting that battle myself, but I hope it's a mantle that people are educated about and that that is something that if you're going to have the legislature call them in together by their own authority, then you also need to give the governor that additional power on a meaningful veto. Well, let's move on to another battle, sir, that you indicated this week that you're prepared to fight, and that's in the midterms uh, uh, in 2020. You want to have an active voice in the future of, of your party. Exactly. I, I took that to mean, sir, that you want to tack your party a bit more toward the center than it has been in recent years. Am I correct? Uh, I would characterize it this way. Uh, I want to demonstrate uh, through uh, my national leadership efforts that conservatism can be tolerant. Conservatism can understand the necessity of diversity in our nation. Uh, conservatism can uh, reflect uh, listening to the other side, or it can also reflect working in a bipartisan way on certain issues and not abandoning your principles. Uh, this is the conservatism that uh, I hold dear, that I believe reflects uh, the conservatism of Ronald Reagan and, and uh, Abraham Lincoln that uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote about the uh, team of rivals where uh, Abraham Lincoln brought in those that actually opposed him and made up his cabinet this is conservatism to me that moves our country forward. And so that's my ideal uh, of an America uh, strong and free uh, initiative that I'm going to set up, gauge for 2022 to make a difference in our country and to be a voice for conservatism that can uh, understand tolerance at the same time. Well, I, I must say, sir, when I heard you uh, earlier this week, when you when you disclose your plans, th things a couple of phrases popped into my mind: kinder and gentler and compassionate conservatism from two pre from two uh, other Republicans. That sort of conservatism, sir, would appear to be out of tune, uh, out of sync with 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 the dominant Republican theme today, uh, or is it? Am I wrong? 
No, I think that you're right uh, in the sense that uh, we have uh, a conservative uh, Republican Party right now that is portrayed and perceived as being angry, uh, that is being intolerant, uh, that is not being compassionate. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things we have to fight hard for during the Biden administration, so you're not taking away hard-fought battles. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there's ways that you can communicate. Uh, here in the legislative session, just uh, yesterday, uh, signed the bill that uh, gave DACA students, DACA students, the ability to get uh, state licenses for their profession, whether it is engineering or whether it is nursing or whether it is uh, teaching. This is, we could not have done this 10, 10 years ago. And so we've moved toward a more cat compassion understanding of those immigrants that have come here to our country and we need them uh, to be productive. And so that's a good example that we did here in Arkansas that I think is important and part of our message and that uh, we can be conservative, but at the same time, uh, as you said, uh, George Bush talked about a compassionate conservatism. Uh, Mike Huckabee talked about uh, uh, you can be a conservative, but you don't have to be mad at the world. Uh, and so that's a message that I think is important today. Sir, if uh, with all respect, let me give you 15 seconds or less. Could, could this interest group lead to a presidential campaign by Asa Hutchinson? Is that under consideration? That uh, that's not under consideration. What's under consideration is 2022. Uh, we'll see where that leads, but that is the, uh, the critical uh, turn next turning point for our country. And I think my voice is important in that, and I want to make a difference uh, uh, during that uh, election cycle. And that's why I'm governor. Uh, I think that's important for Arkansas, and I think it's important for our nation. Well, I think you took 20 seconds, sir, but we hope you come back anyway. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Thank you. And we'll be right back. And we're back. Tuesday's the target date for the legislature to stand in recess, though the work will resume in earnest in only a few months. Joining us now, Republican Representative Mary Bentley of Perryville and Senator Joyce Elegant, Democrat of Little Rock. We may have as our guest the mo what's generally regarded the most liberal member of the General Assembly and one of the, if not the most conservative members. If you don't know which is which, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Bentley, it was a session uh, by anybody's standard. It was a session for conservatives, particularly social conservatives. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson has indicated that at times your block went too far. Do you concur? Is there is there anything to that? I think that our block really represents the people of Arkansas. We had a 78 majority in the House of Republican members, and we are a very pro-life state. And we, I think, we very well represent the thoughts and the feelings of our constituents. And I have been, uh, even this morning, brought flowers for my constituents that are very supportive of what we passed this session. And my constituents are very happy with what we what we put forth. How much of what you uh, uh, were able to achieve legislatively is likely to, to withstand judicial review? I mean, some uh, any number of organizations are already promising lawsuits. Well, we knew that we knew that going in, right? Very much so. Visited with the attorney general's office, and from uh, my visits with the attorney general's office, they felt very much in favor of everything that we've passed so far. Uh, Senator Elliott. Well, I think being in favor of something is one thing, but uh, whether or not it's good for the people of our state or whether or not it is it is legal and won't cost us millions of dollars, which is what we're set up for. Uh, I mean, I, I think of the things that bothered me the most, and there were some good things that happened, but just in response, it is it is not to me a good idea. You know, all of the, the legislation we passed, but people with the best interests at heart, I assume, uh, what we're doing to transgender kids, people in this state are not that by and large the people in this state are not for voter uh, suppression by, by and large and the people of this state of course have not been for many many years constantly telling women what to do with their bodies or interfering with families when they have to make reproductive uh, or life life changing decisions so we continue to to concentrate on social issues when we have so many other issues like health care, like housing, education, whether or not our kids are going to have a great start. We didn't do anything for the most part 
to move the ball forward for those things that really matter to the quality of life. I, I think we actually went backward because I am really so concerned about what's happening to our kids who are LGBTQ, but mainly transgender. Well, well your colleague, though, from Perryville has a point, does she not? This is a general assembly that was uh, elected, after all, by a stunning majority of our Kansans. That is, that is exactly right. But what I think people, the, the difference I began to see, that people did not, were not elected thinking they were going go to go come to the Capitol and do the damage that we did. Uh, because most, most of the Republicans I talked to voted in, in, in a way that they did not believe. For example, uh, so many people didn't, did not vote this way. I'm talking about legislators. But they didn't think it was okay for what we're doing to transgender kids. And not everybody was uh, for I, the voter suppression bills that, that we have out there. Many were. I think I would disagree well, with that. Uh, I, well, and you should disagree with the House for your sure. votes. Uh, I don't have any problem with your disagreeing with it. I'm just saying that for Arkansas to move forward, I know for sure that most people in the in state would rather have good housing, great schools, highways that work, internet service that works. These are things in people's everyday lives. And let them work on themselves. Well, I appreciate it, let, Senator Elliott, but we did pass some good bills Let me bills go to Ms. Bentley now and give her. So, yeah, I think we passed a great bill yesterday on housing. Uh, Representative Hawks brought it forth a bill to help, help with habitability yesterday. We worked, I think, extremely hard on broadband. Uh, last session, this session, we have done great things to move broadband forward. We've worked very hard on that. We've worked hard on education. And Joyce, you helped me pass a bill uh, just late in the night on Tuesday night for Healthy Hack of Arkansas to help in our schools. So I think we are moving the ball forward. I think we've done some great bills. And I, I guess I wholeheartedly disagree. I think we've done some great things to move our state forward. My constituents uh, love children. We all love children. We think that we are doing a great service to help our kids. So I, I guess I would disagree with you on that. I think we're moving the ball forward. I think my constituents and my colleagues, I've not heard any of them um, voice the the thoughts that you have. And I know, Joyce, that you represent your district well, that your constituents well, love you. They have reelected you and done a great job. But my constituents and the constituents of my colleagues are very happy. And that's what I'm hearing. In fact, like I said, I even got flowers delivered to me this morning. I couldn't go through the grocery store on Sunday for people stopping me and thanking me for sharing their values. And we think it'll move Arkansas forward. And I know that you and I can disagree uh, in a good sure. manner, Joyce, that you and I can disagree to move things yeah. forward. And do we need to do more? I wholeheartedly agree with you that we need to do more for education in our state. And I look forward to doing that. And I look forward to uh, moving, moving the ball forward even more for our kids and our Kansans because we, we definitely just got started, Joyce, yeah. without a doubt, on health and all those things. Let me ask Ms. Bentley, you, th your position, you were one of, the more for, more, one of the more forceful advocates on the transgender front uh, for yeah. restrictions on, okay. Right. That your position would seem to put you the, and the state in terms of legislation proposed and enacted out of step with much of corporate America and in many other states. Now, your response to that? Well, our response is I look at the Arkansas seal and Arkansas seal says the people rule, the, the seal doesn't say the corporates rule. And you know, I, I worked at Arkansas Children's Hospital for 14 years, I love kids. My whole heart on that bill was to protect children. I think that's exactly what we did. And, and as many of my colleagues did, we were out there to protect children. It's a decision that should be made later in life and life-changing decisions should not be made, made at childhood. And I, I love children. Like I said, I work at children to protect children's lives. And I think that I have done exactly that this session, protected children's lives and given them a chance to move forward. I'm very concerned at the suicide rate in our state. It's been going up for years. Um, and some definitely some things that we need to look at, but I think that we've done things to move that in the right direction. As, well, my, as my colleagues do in the House. All right, but any response, though, to the, to the great reservations expressed uh, by, by some of the major corporations in America, not only in Arkansas, to Arkansas policies, but in uh, uh, social policies, social legislation in other states as well, particularly in the South. Could this I, wind I, up damaging yeah. the state? I think that's a great, that's a really great question, Steve. And I have been troubled by, I am all about Arkansas, making sure that we have a good tax policy for businesses, that we create a good workforce, that they have people to work at their business. But I have a real problem with, with corporations that deal with China, that deal with a country that has great human rights tragedies. Um, and we know who we're talking about, right? Those people deal with China and encourage things that are going on in China for them to try and, and to correct me ethically. I have a real, I have a problem with that. And I think my constituents do as well. All right, the gentlewoman from Little Rock is going to get the last word because we're low on time. Senator Elliott. 
Well, I, I missed some of what was said, but the thing I want for Arkansas is to have a North Star. And we can look at these things in terms of um, social values matter. But these are things that should not be legislated. I just want us to, for once, come to the Arkansas legislature and think about the quality of life for all of us. We, of course, disagree on some things that are needed, especially in the social arena. But I think all of us understand those things that are needed for great quality of life are, is what should be uh, concentrated on. And for, by all means, uh, we need to, when we get back into the session in 20, uh, 20 what, 23, I guess, um, we really should look at the voter suppression bill that we passed because that is the foundation. People having access to the ballot is a foundation for everything we do. And I know that people of the state are going to be pleased with some of the things we did, but from, for the most part, we went way too far in, I think, going back to the 20th century of whatever century you might want to name. We're just so much better when we when we will work together to move families forward, not get in their business. And it's true, Representative Bentley and I did work, we, we passed that bill out and one that she had in the committee where I was chairing in the education committee. It was about people's quality of life and those are the kind of things that we can work on as opposed to uh, many of the social issues that we that we um, put into legislation. And we're going to have a huge tax bill because all of this is going to be going to court. And Senator, Thank I have you. to I have to end it. I apologize to both of you. I have to end it there because no we're simply out of time. A pledge. Thank we'll you, have Brian. both Thanks. of you back soon. I would love that. All right. Good. <laughs> thank you. And we thank you, as always, for joining us. See you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89.